Grandmother. Grandmother, are you feeling better now? Every time I close my eyes, I think I'm looking at this room for the last time. So many things have happened to me in this room. Did I tell you the secret, Edward? No. Oh. No, not yet. Why don't I remember the right things? What are you doing here? You're dead. You're dead. Grandmother, there is no one in this room. He's come for me. I know it. Daniel, keep away from me. Daniel? Keep away from me. I always hated you. You ruined my husband. You never were a father to him. You made us live in this house. I hated it. We wanted to live in the, in the old house. I begged you. You said no. No, if you're going to be a Collins, you must live at Collins. That's what you said. I found out what it was to be a Collins. I found out. Go away from me. Don't come near me, Daniel. If I am dying, I won't go with you. Send for someone else. Send for someone else for me. You are Send not... for someone else. You are not dying. <laughs> Give him go away, Edward. Make Daniel go away. There is no one in this room. Listen. Are they dancing downstairs? Oh, grandmother. Oh, they shouldn't be dancing. Your father is so ill. The, the secret, Grandmother, the secret. You must tell me. You must tell me for the family's sake. <laughs> what are you carrying on about a secret? <laughs> Didn't my mother warn you? Never tell Edith a secret. <laughs> Edith can't help but telling. She must have told you that. I remember she did. On the day of the picnic. The day before our... Wedding. I am Edward, your grandson. You have a secret you have not told me. Please, grandmother, please. Everyone keeps asking me. They say, tell me, tell me the secret. Judith, Carl, even Quentin, poor Quentin. And we're not going to waste time talking about Quentin. Needless to say, I was upset that you let him come back. <laughs> upset? Edward, you're always upset. You've always been upset. No, no, I mustn't start on that. I haven't time. I have no I was wondering how she is. She's asleep now. Come in. I must apologize to you. Oh, no. No, I was curt. I, I didn't welcome you properly. I understand. Um, tell me about yourself. I'm, I'm most interested. I pay you next week. The cards will not tell the truth unless there is money in my hand. Oh, all right. But, but you're going to tell me tonight, aren't you? Everything about the will? I will tell you whatever the cards say. I bet Grandma told you lots. Of, I bet you know lots of things about the will. Hey, I, 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 uh, I bet you, you, you could probably help out the cards a little bit if you, if you wanted to, huh? There is much money. Oh, boy, do I know that. More than anyone knows. Yes. Honest. How much more? The Joker. Yes! Well, what, what does that mean? <laughs> everyone will be very surprised. The Joker! <laughs> She's going to give the money to the Joker. Is that what it means? I do not say that. Well, then what do you say? Say it plainer. Huh? I mean, I mean, Grandmother likes my joke. She does. I mean, you know, she just laughs and laughs. There is murder behind the Joker. Murder? Oh, now, come on. I mean, it's just money. Nobody kills for money. That's not 
true, is it? But Edith has the last laugh. She knows what she has done. The queen is in her parlor. She's gone. But I am going to find that secret out somehow. If it's the last thing I do. since you got back. Have you indeed? <laughs> if you have any more dreary little contraptions hidden in this room, I wish you would tell me about them now. Oh, that would take all the fun out of it, wouldn't it? For you, yes. But then, you're so easily amused, Carl. You must be a frightfully happy person. Oh, yes, I guess I am most of the time. Well, perhaps we can arrange for you to be happy all of the time in a sanitarium where you can regale your fellow inmates with one prank after another. Wait, wait, wait. Any man just, just who plays minute. the buffoon the morning after a member of his own family has passed on. Now, just a minute, Edward. I have just as much respect for the dead as you do, and don't you ever forget it. Well, then I wish you would observe a period of mourning in the proper manner. Edward, I know something you don't know. I beg your pardon? Grandmother died without telling you the secret, didn't she? What if she did? Now you think no one will ever know it. But you're wrong, Edward. What are you talking about? Someone knows the secret, Edward. Someone right here in this house. What is this all about? Just go into the drawing room and wait. Where is Quentin? He's just getting up. He'll be, he'll be down in a minute. Just go into the drawing room. Edward. Up, up. There are things to be settled now, Carl. Just go in. You're as predictable as the morning sun. And what does that mean? Calling a family council before grandmother's even buried yet. But you never did like to let the grass grow, as they say. Inside, please. As you all know, Grandmother died before she was able to tell me the secret. But before she died, she told one of you three. One of us? Uh, whatever gave you that idea, Edward? Tell them what you told me, Carl. I was with Magda last night. She knew the exact moment Grandmother died. She also knew that Grandmother did not tell Edward the secret. Then she said, someone else knows it. Now it is inconceivable that she would have told any of the children, and she certainly didn't tell anyone outside the family. 
I'm positive she didn't tell me. That leaves you three. You mean th those two? If it were I, why would I have told you what I did? Why not? It would have been a clever way to cast suspicions elsewhere. Who do you think I am, crazy? There are times, Carl, when you are as crazy as a fox. It could easily be you, and you know it. Why, I hardly saw the old lady the last week. But you did see her, didn't you? Oh, yes. And you were alone with her? Oh, look, for the last time, I, I, I don't know this secret. Now, I'll, I'll swear an oath on it. Splendid. Go and get the good book, brother, and let him take the oath. This is not a matter to be treated lightly, Quentin. That's right. Nor does it call for a minor inquisition. I mean, the answer to who knows the secret should be painfully obvious. Who is it? Our dear sister Judith, who else? That's a lie. My lord, would you direct the defendant to keep quiet while the prosecution states its case? Edward, make him stop carrying on like this. For once, I want to hear what he has to say. Who in this house in the past week saw more of grandmother than anyone else? And who did their utmost to prevent others from seeing her? Dear Judith. Edward, I swear she did not tell me the secret. And would you admit it if she had? Of course she wouldn't, but the fact is she had the best opportunity to worm the secret out of her. And she did. I did not. Look at her, Edward. She never could lie very well. When it comes to straight-faced lying, Quentin, it's impossible to compete with you. Touché. And as long as you're reviewing the events of the past week, why don't you tell Edward about your visit to Grandmother? There's nothing to tell. I think there is. He went to Grandmother's room and tried to force the secret out of her last night. Clayton, is that true? Now that you've done your duty, Judith, do you feel cleansed? You haven't answered my question. Yes, it's true. I tried to force the secret out of her. It happened in a weak moment. And you must be the one. I failed to follow that logic. You terrorized her! You probably told her you would kill her if she didn't tell you. So she came up and told her. I'd like to be able to say that you were right, Edward, but alas, the old lady was too much for me. The regrettable fact is, she wasn't afraid of dying. Very well. Each of you denies being the one. That means that one of you is lying. We are not leaving this room until I find out who it is. Oh, come now, Edward. I have things to do. Your practical jokes can wait till this is settled, Carl. Edward, what if she didn't tell any of us? After all, you only have the word of a gypsy to go on. Now, we all know that Grandmother didn't mean to go to her grave with that secret. She meant to tell someone, and she told one of you three. Not necessary. What does that mean? We're all forgetting that... Uh... Judith let one other person in to see Grandmother, Barnabas Collins. Oh, she would never have told him. Why not? He is a relative. Or claims he is. Carl, go to the old house and tell Barnabas to come here at once. Well, well, what does it always have to be me? Just, just go, Carl, and don't come back without him. Yes. I believe Barnabas Collins is a very real possibility. He could have forced it out of her. If force didn't work for you, it wouldn't work for him. She either told him or she didn't. It's a simple matter. There you are. I came as soon as I got your message. I knew you would. Come. How peaceful she looks. Very. The look is deceptive, of course. She did not die in peace, we know that. She tried to tell me the secret. Of that, I'm sure. It's always been told to the eldest son. There's no question of her not trusting me. None at all. There is the possibility that, in my absence, she told someone else. Oh? You, for example. She could have told you. 
The truth is, I think she did. Mr. Collins, what is the secret? What is in the mausoleum? I have no idea why you would think that, that Mrs. Collins would confide the secret to me. I'm not making a wild accusation. You may think you're not. We know she told someone else. How do you know? A gypsy woman told us. You believe this gypsy? My grandmother was very eccentric. She took a liking to this woman. The woman told her many things. We have ample proof of that. And I am part of that proof. Now, what actually did she say? My brother Carl, whom I believe you met. Yes. Carl was with the gypsy woman when my grandmother died. He asked her if my grandmother had told me the secret. She said no, but that there was a living person who knew it. So you accuse me? I have made sure that no one else knows. Not Judith or Carl. Or Quentin. Oh, my grandmother never would have told him. But you, a total stranger. And you resemble so the portrait of the original Barnabas Collins. Her mind wavered from the past to the present. Mr. Collins, if she told you the she secret... She did not. Now, we had a few words together. We discussed the necklace that I brought from England, and then you came in. Really, Mr. Collins, I find it incredible that you should take that gypsy woman so seriously. I must. For over a hundred years, the eldest son in our family has all know, always known what that secret is. I will not be able to rest until I know what it is. Well, I wish I could help you discover whatever that secret is, but... Well, I'm afraid I can't. I keep feeling that she's written it somewhere. Oh, she was. Oh, she was such a secretive woman. Perhaps she had to be. A list of her distrust would be very long. She distrusted lawyers, for example. There is even some speculation about her will. Oh, there is one. She, she left a sealed envelope. My sister Judith telling where it could be found. Oh, if only I had been here before her last illness, everything would have been different. I would have seen to it. Quentin. Good evening, Evan. You have my sincerest condolences. <laughs> Quentin, you loathe my grandmother because she knew about you. Why, what do you mean? She knew nothing about me. There is nothing to know. I'll remind you of that at our next meeting. I do wish you wouldn't mention those here, really, Quentin. As you wish, Evan. Are you here to hold our hands while the will is read? I am here because Judith asked me. It seems she has reason to believe the two gypsies witnessed the will. For all anyone knows, your grandmother may have left everything to them. No, the money will go to a Collins. I uh, had hoped you knew the will. No. No. That you might be able to tell me if I got anything. And if I got nothing, help me. It's too late after the will is read. You would help me, though, wouldn't you? If I got hold of the will, it could be changed. You can't. Ten percent of my inheritance, Evan. I'm sure you could find somebody to imitate the writing of Grandmother. You have no time. Judith is bringing me the letter. I will find the will. I certainly can't turn it over to you first. But you could invent difficulties. One quarter, Evan. I really can have nothing to do with it. You know my position. I know several of your positions. I know your private life and your public one. If you are thinking about blackmail, just remember I know as much about you. People expect me to be bad. You need money. Or has that changed? You shouldn't have married such an extravagant wife. You'll help me? I'll get it. Give me one hour. Evan, 
Thank God you've come. Edward, you have my deepest and sincerest condolences. Yes, of course. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Well, this is a cousin of ours from England, Barnabas Collins, Evan Hanley. Mr. Collins, how sorry I feel for you. Such a sad time for a visit. If you'll excuse me, I can wait no longer to pay my respects to a very gallant old lady. Uh, last of a kind, I swear it, with her passage of words, has lost a great deal of <laughs> Why, hello there. He hated her. And she thought he was a shyster. You do look like your ancestor. Yes. And you must be Jameson. That's right. Did you hear that I was a good boy or a bad one? Well, that all depends on who you talk to about me. Well, I talk to no one, really, about you. They've all forgotten about me since great-grandmother died. Have you seen her? Yes. I've never seen a dead person before. I'm gonna go in with Quentin. I'm not scared when I'm with him. Have you seen him around anywhere? No, I'm afraid I haven't. You're very fond of Quentin, aren't you? Yes, of course I am. But a silly question. You don't like him, do you? You're just like the rest of them. Well, I don't like you either, so there. can be free so easily, Magda. All you have to do is tell me where the will is. No! Uh, no. Uh, uh.